All right, all right, all right, guys. Welcome to another weekly live. My name is Gam Tech. I'm COO of ATM2Kettle.com here with another weekly live, guys. So let's break down exactly what we're going to get into today. The question, the money question, is $10,000 a month really reasonable in the ATM business? We actually have our, uh, our ATM expert over here. Uh, Mike should be joining in a second. Let's see, guys. How many, how many of you guys are excited? I want you to comment Mike below. Comment Mike if you guys are excited to figure out, hey, Mike, can I make 10K a month? Right? What's going on, Mike? What's up, Gadam? How are you? Ah, oh, man, I'm good. I'm good. I'm always good. I'm Thanks like, for having me on, man. Exciting. It's been a minute. Yeah, I was like, I, gotta, I, I can only reserve like one curse word for live. So I'm like, hold on. I'm like, I get excited, man. Sometimes I'm, it's the military, <laughs> man. It's like you get it out of the Marine Corps and you're like, man, I'm pumped. Talking to everybody, so. yeah, let's go. Yeah, no, I yeah, yeah. love to share wealth and knowledge with everybody. You know, I, you. I'm Heck ready. Yeah. I'm ready. Let's bring it. So, so, I, so I got up. I'm seeing a lot of mic questions, and I see hi, Mike. So some familiar faces, right? So, Mike, for people that don't know you, because we have a lot of people that just joined the live, and I'm probably like, who the next Mike? Like Mike Ike or what's going on? So, can you give us a little bit of background so they know like who they're actually listening to? Sure. Absolutely. Tons of Mike out there. Tons of Mike's out there. Everybody's got the name Mike, right? My name is Mike St. John, owner, founder of High Country ATM. I'm an ATM processor nationwide, and I own a lot of it. I still own, operate a lot of ATMs, a little over 158 ATMs of myself. Been in the business about 12 years and uh, interesting back, background story, man. I mean, I come from the real estate game. Went through the 08 crash. I lost everything, literally was homeless. Before that was nine to five, living paycheck to paycheck, right? Just trying to support the family and, and figure things out. And I always knew I wanted to do something on my own, you know? And, uh, you know, I moved from uh, uh, from Utah or California to Utah to Colorado. And then I couldn't find a job out here, but that was when the dispensary industry was just getting started, recreational booming. And I thought, well, I've got management skills. I'm going to go test it out. Right. And just, and I ended up managing a dispensary. Right. I was like literally the only one that didn't smoke pot in the whole thing. Cause they were like, Oh, you're perfect for running the business. Right. I was really good with numbers and real estate, my background. And so the ATM guy used to come in there all the time and I he used to wear his leather jacket. And I'd always just think to myself, like, who is this guy? You know, like, is he, is he from the mafia or is he actually from a bank? Like, I don't get it. <laughs> you know, but lo and behold, man, I mean, I hit him up and and uh, 12 years ago, and he handed me his card. And of course, I had a million questions because, get him, you know, what, what most people don't realize is the opportunity they, they have now because there's so much information out there on the ATM business. I mean, you could learn anything you wanted to about the ATM business, literally. Back 12 years ago, you could not find it on the internet. You could not find videos. There was no YouTube. There, like, you know what I mean? So for me, when I first got started, it was like I, I literally had a hundred different questions and took me like two months to even get into the business because I was really, really skeptical. I had just like such limiting beliefs. Like, this is too good to be true. You mean I could replace my income overnight? Just by servicing a few of your ATMs and then and then scaling and getting one at a time of my own, I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, there's just, you know, I'd been screwed over in the past from real estate. I lost everything. Right. And I had hopped from broker to broker and lost a ton of money from different brokers. They all, owned, a lot of them still owe me money. And so I, the whole trust thing, you know, of course I had a million questions and it's funny if he's listening right now, he's going to be like, yeah, you sure did have a lot of questions, uh, but you couldn't find it. So I was skeptical, right? It was like, there's no way that I can buy an ATM, put it in a location, make a $3 surcharge every time somebody uses it. There's just like, it's, it's gotta be only for banks, but little did I realize, I mean, he's my mentor, right? Everybody's got a mentor and, uh, or you should have a mentor. He had already had, you know, four or 500 ATMs at that time and been in the business 15 years back 12 years ago. So, um, you know, of course it was hard because I didn't know anybody in the business. So I couldn't really ask questions and verify that the information he was telling me was correct. So I just had to leap in all faith. Just, you know what? I've been screwed over many times before, but I got to put faith in humanity again and just, just go with my gut. So 
I'm really glad I did, right? I jumped in. I've started vaulting, which means for you guys that don't know, vaulting means putting your money into a machine and you getting your money back and, and a portion of that $3 surcharge, right, to vault for somebody. And I replaced my income overnight. And I said, well, wait a minute. I'm in the cannabis industry. I've got a lot of connections. I can start doing this. I can, I can start calling my connections. And so one good ATM at a time is what I teach today. It doesn't have to be dispensary locations. Could be There's so many good locations on every corner in every city, right? One good location at a time. I've done that for 12 years. I've averaged one new ATM a month, at least back then. You know, uh, Now I'm a little more picky on what where I deploy. Um, but yeah, 158-ish ATMs now, 12 years later, high six figures just on the ATMs alone. And we process a little over 2,400 ATMs nationwide. So I started with nothing, literally paycheck to paycheck. And, you know, fast forward 12 years. I mean, I'm glad I stuck with it because if I can do it, anybody can do it. That's kind of like what I tell everybody when I mentor them is like, look, I give you, I'm giving you my story. This is how I started and I just didn't give up. And getting with that, get them. There's so many times I wanted to give up because, because there was no information out in the world and no data, right, that I can pull from and learn. And uh, at the time, like my, my mentor was teaching me the business, but very limited because he didn't want me to be a competitor. We were in the same area. I had to learn it all on my own and make all the mistakes, you know. And now you don't have to do that. The information is there there for everybody to avoid those you know and that's half of my mentorship calls us is preventing people from making those mistakes to excel a lot faster and do it in half the time i did so it's been an amazing journey man i mean i'm i get this question all the time again it was well is the atm business going away it's going to go away no cash is king and will be for my lifetime and your kids lifetime and their kids kids lifetime because cash is king no matter what, you know, you, you, for, for instance, like a credit card machine goes down, which happens at one of my locations all the time, my ATM blows up and I'll make 40 or 50 bucks that day. And that happens a couple times a month, right? Cash is always going to be king. And so I won't dive into that. Just wanted to give you a little bit of my story, man, and, and let everybody know who I am and where I come from. And, and uh, I'm humbled, humbled, you know, I'm here to help everybody. So it's been That's an exciting wild. journey. That's what I'm talking about. Okay. So I guess the question I'd have, so you brought up basically like, I mean, it sounds like your, like your life was decimated and then you actually were able to rebuild it. Right. So I guess 100%. my question would be, um, what would it like, what was your hesitation with starting the business? Hesitation is just not knowing there was no information. I couldn't research it. I couldn't verify the information that my, my now best friend and mentor of my entire life, right. I call my sensei. Uh, you know, I couldn't verify what he was telling me to be true. I thought it was a total scam at first. I'm like, this is just, you know, when things are too good to be true, usually they are. And it was one of those instances where I was like, this is just way too good to be true. There's no way, right? I could work vaulting for you. I can work one day a week loading machines and replace my income. And I don't have to work nine to five anymore. Wait a minute. What? Yeah. Okay. That would make anybody skeptical. You know what I mean? So that was my biggest hesitation. Like I say, it took me about two months to really jump the gun and probably 150 questions later, right. And meeting him in person and going to a shop and looking at the machines and trying to figure out what I was even looking at. But uh, yeah, that was my biggest hesitation for sure. You know, and not understanding it and not having access to that information, you okay. know? So. Okay. And then can you like walk us through, because you know what I find in business is like, it's like saying, Hey, Jeff Bezos, you're making like $50 billion a year. It's hard to like figure out that path. So can you walk us through just maybe like your first one or two ATMs? Like how'd that work out? Oh, I was nervous and scared to death to be quite frank. Like I didn't know anything about the business, but I, I did have a mentor to teach me at least the initial steps. A lot of it I had to figure out. He's an old, he's an old school police captain. So he was like, get in there, figure it out. And here's a sheet and have fun with it. Right. So literally back then it would take me three hours to program a machine T today. Fast forward with all the information, it's 20 minutes. It's super simple, <laughs> right? Cause all the information's there. But for me, it was being nervous, trying to figure it out after I did my first install, like, and I saw 
getting that surcharge for the very first time, not having to be there. I'm like, oh, this is for me. This is like lights out. It was game over for me. How, how can I deploy more of these? I'm going out to find a location. Like I say, one a month was my my minimum, but I was trying to get at least visit 10 places a week. And it just exploded for me, you know? So it was super, super exciting. And it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be because it really is simple. I mean, you buy an ATM. Now you own the asset. You put it, the employee, I call it a little employee. You put it on the corner, whether it's an emergent, but I call it on the corner. Customers use it. You make passive income off of that every time somebody uses the ATM. And then, you know, you as you scale and you start getting, you know, five, 10 machines and it, you realize you get what's called a pooled return, which means you got 10 machines working for you to pay off not only your machines, but to pay off your 11th, right? And there's another thing that I teach, which is which is beautiful. Uh, it's I call it the pooled return fact, but it's just law of numbers, really. It's it's when you get your 12th machine, your 12 machines are paying for your 13th that much quicker. And you're, when you get 13, now you're, it's paying for 14th that much quicker. So by the time you get to your 15, 16 machine, it was paid for maybe three or four weeks ago, right? And all of a sudden you grow to 20, 30 machines and you got a machine paid for three months ago. And it's all 100% passive income coming in at that point. It, it's amazing. So. Nice, nice. Yeah, nice. I like yeah. It. Hopefully, everybody's following that. No, <laughs> so, no, that makes sense. I don't want to get so too I, complex. I want to keep it simple, you know. Yeah, so I mean, I guess I'd ask you, like, what are like maybe one mistake you wish you would not have made, right? Because there's always like one where, you're like, oh man, let me tell you about this. So. Oh my goodness, there's a whole list of mistakes that I made starting because, like I said, I didn't have that that correct guidance. I really had to learn everything on my own. Um, I think. You know, during the maybe the second year, I think not doing the market research of, uh, you know, I would just throw them in anywhere, which you can't do that. You got to make sure that the locations are busy. You know, I learned the formula later on, which is three to five percent of the customers or the foot traffic into a location will use the ATM. So you like to see foot traffic of at least 75 to 100 people going into a business every single day. And it's almost guaranteed that you'll get three to five transactions a day. For me to put it into a chiropractic shop that was non-cash and, and I, you know, they'd see maybe 10, 15 people a day. The ATM sat there for three months and I learned a hard lesson like that, right? But today there's information out, to, out there that shows you not to do that. We, we teach that, right? Just a little, lot of little mistakes like that that you don't, back then you couldn't learn. You had to go through those mistakes to learn that. But the beauty about the ATM business, get them, is it's an asset that you own. So, okay, the ATM doesn't work out after three months, right? You usually give it three months to see if it's going to work out. You take that ATM and you put it in a new location. No harm, no foul. You, you own that asset. It's not like it's going anywhere. We call it a floating asset, get them. Yeah. I like that. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I'll kind of ask you another question, but I actually saw a really good one from the audience. So um, this actually came for some reason, it's not showing the picture, but it came from Abby. So Abby says, I hope I didn't call you out, Abby. What do you tell yourself when you're scared to start a new venture, in this case, the ATM machines, to encourage yourself to continue forward anyways? You know, I've learned over the years to go with your gut. When usually something smells fishy or not good, it usually isn't, you know? It's taken me a lot of years to really listen to my gut. If it feels right, you just, you got to take the jump. Scare money don't make no money. And that's the truth, really. But you you honestly got to take careful, careful steps to ensure that you're making the right decision. Um, and making sure you have the right team behind you, right? And and back then it was hard for me because I wasn't sure. I didn't know this guy. And I, you know, today's different. It's totally different. All the resources are there. Everything is right in front of you and it's all laid out. It makes it so easy. But yeah, I would say if, if it feels right, just do it. Listen to your gut 100% of the time, for sure. I do that with locations now. Sometimes I'll evaluate and uh, 
even though the merchant's saying, oh, this is going to be a great location. You know, we see X amount of people a day, but I'm like going there and I'm looking, I'm like, they got no security. Like, you know, there's nobody showing up. And I'm like, mm, my gut's telling me not to do this. I'll turn it down. Just you, you got to get good at listening to your intuition. So that's a good question, though. I like that one. Yeah, that was great. Thanks, it, was, it was one of those like you're like yeah, yeah that's a serious question because it happens to me all the time in business all the time you're just like you doubt yourself at times so for sure and and here's something to add to that too sometimes like if you don't make that decision and don't jump you're never gonna know and you may be missing an opportunity of a lifetime like i said i've been screwed over several times before in a lot of different ventures most of my ventures in the past never worked out and i got screwed in the end it, yeah. What's in the past? It's in the rear view for the for a reason, right? I mean, you got to look through your windshield. There's nothing but opportunity. But again, you got to use your gut and intuition and make sure it feels right. So that's what I, like I got it. to say about that. Yeah, I like you can't it. give I like up. It. Can't give up. Like, yeah. So so I guess my question before, because guys, if you know, if you have any questions, comment it below right now because we're 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 gonna pull like two to three questions, and I want like not like. Where do I start? Well, like something specific, guys. We want like value. So, because we do have free guides. And if you don't have the guide, comment PDF below because we have a literally a breakdown guide for free that breaks down the business. So, I guess my question to you, Mike, would be this. Um, where do you see yourself in the ATM business? I'm not going to say five years from now. Let's just say three years from now. Three years from now. Well, I see at least double the amount of ATMs we got. I mean, because our network is pretty vast across the country. And so um, I've gotten pretty good at knowing which locations are good and which aren't and doing my market data. But we've got a vast team now and it's we're nationwide. And so, you know, we, we process 2,400 ATMs. I'd like to be at 5,000 in the next three to four years. And I would like to be at least three to 400, you know, just and what's cool about my mentor is he's over a thousand ATMs. He's 23 years in the business. He's got over a thousand ATMs nationwide. It's something about when you see that somebody else can do it and you're still working towards that, like they're they're achieving their goals and you see it, you, you want to ride that tidal wave and get the right there with them. I've been trying to catch up to him, but he's just kind of he's he's just fast. He's just, <laughs> he sprints faster than I do, but yeah. uh <laughs> I'm going to get, I'm going to catch up one of these days. I'm going to catch up, but it, it's motivating. Right. And that's where I won't stop. Business doesn't stop. Um, and honestly, it really comes down to the team that you have too. Once you get, get to the level and that you got to hire delegate and have a, a really solid foundation, a good team and excellent customer service, which is most important. So yeah, that's huge. That's huge. Mm -hmm. So um, I actually have, let me see this. So I had one question. That was actually really good. I, I didn't even think I'd ask you this. So this came from our viewers. They mentioned, since you're advertising it this much big, and they're talking about the ATM business, you don't think the market would be overwhelmed so fast? No, because a lot of businesses are closing, but triple the amount of businesses are opening. New businesses are opening every day. So take my my town for example i live in a smaller town near bigger cities but even in this town i've got over 50 atms right like businesses close new ones or they get sold and new owners and or sometimes atms are old in a location and you upgrade their atm or sometimes you give them a little more surcharge the merchant there's a thousand ways to skin the cat in this business i've only really mentioned one about getting you know <laughs> getting surcharged. There's a lot of ways to make money in this business. Um, but there's businesses opening all the time, everywhere. That's my answer to that. There's always new business. Like there are like a ton that. of locations that have been open for s several years. I mean, I just walked into a gas station out of the blue. There's a prime example, quick example. So there's this big, there's this gas station. It's a little, you pump it and you, you pump your own gas there, right? I've been trying to get that location for six years. Well, they just six sold years. it. Six yeah. years. Yeah, I've been. I'm, persistence wears down resistance. Eventually, I'm going to get it. Write that down, you guys. Persistence wears down resistance 100% of the time. And I've gotten most of my deals. <laughs> ding, 
mic drop. Yeah. By not giving up and not taking no for an answer, right? It's no now, but it may be, it's going to be yes later. Eventually you're going to get tired of hearing from me and get an ATM in your location. But anyways, come to find out, I drove by it the other day. It was like a week and a half ago, two weeks ago. Well, I seen this sign on the gas pumps. You know how they have the prices, get them? Yeah. Well, it says this price, you know, your, your unleaded, your, you know, your regular, your premium, whatever. Well, then at the bottom, it said your cash only gas price, which was 10 cents off the regular. So I'm like, wait a minute. They never had that before. So I zoomed in there. Well, it turns out that they, they just had sold. There's new ownership. Okay. This perfect example. Businesses sell new ownership. Walked in there, landed the deal. We're installing the ATM literally next week, next week, or maybe the week after. They've got some, they're remodeling inside. That is going to be, they sell lotto in there and they definitely see two to 300 people a day in that store. It's a convenience store plus gas station. Bang. That's a, that's, that's a golden goose, right? So prime example of that. And uh, boy, was I excited. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, Thank goodness. The last owner is gone. I got this new owner. It's totally cool. Spent time, talked to me and yeah, it's, it's amazing. So that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Okay, so let's do this. Yeah. Let's open it up to some questions, guys. I saw um, questions in here. I see a lot of the PDFs. So we're going to get you guys those PDFs over there. Um, one question is going to be um, moving to California, but info states not a good place. The ATM business comes, please. So it's not that it's not a kind of this. It's not that it's not a good place, guys. It's just that with banks right now, it's like almost impossible. Like we have a bank right now but we're only reserving it for clients because we got to make sure like they're taken care of first. So there's always cashless ATMs. So if you haven't checked that out and you're in California, cashless ATM for beginners, that's a Facebook group. And if you don't have that link, send me a DM with the word cashless and I'll send you that link after this guys. Um, next question. Um, man, I'm, I'm scrolling through like a lot of PDF comments. So let me scroll up guys. If you have a question right now, this is the last chance real quick, all right? So um, here we go. So as a startup, I'm trying to live with overhead expenses up front. Two banks who will set up a business account want to charge $250 a month. Is that normal or should I keep looking for more banks? I say keep looking, definitely. They shouldn't be charging more than 20 bucks a month per account because they got to order from the Fed, you know, the cash. Banks don't hold much cash, so they got to order and there's a cost. So understandably, but 250 bucks is way too much. Yeah, keep looking. They're out there. Find the smaller banks. Smaller community banks, not the big names. Stay away from the big banks. I like it. All right. Um, and then I have another one. So, because uh, you mentioned you have 2,500 ATMs. So, based on that, do you have a platform that tracks the machine's uptime and downtime? Oh, absolutely. And what I mean about passive is literally put your cash in there and customers use your ATM and you sit back and You'll get alerted when your cash is low on three different levels, like 1500 or actually you could set it at whatever you want, but it'll send you a text message. You can log, we give you a full portal to log in so you can see your cash balance at any time, your deposits. There's probably 40 different reports you can run for anything and everything. I mean, you can run your entire ATM business and know exactly where it's at right here on this mobile phone, literally. I like yeah, that. it's awesome. I like that a lot. It's amazing. Okay. Um, and I guess my last question, because I don't see any other questions here. Um, I'm getting like this is like PDF, 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 PDF. It's like I don't have vision, it's like terrible at night. So <laughs> everybody wants to be my, that's it. So my question to you would be this. If you were on if, I'll put it this way, if someone was on the fence about starting their ATM business right now, like what would you tell them? Or what would you tell your past self? Know your why. Right. For me, it's my kids. I'm leaving a legacy for my kids. I'm going to build this thing as big as possible. And when I'm long gone, hopefully they don't have to work very hard. Everyone's got a why. Know your why and why you're doing it. If you're on the fence, uh, like I tell everybody else, I mean, if I can do it, anybody can do it. I mean, it's been beyond my wildest dreams. I never thought I would get where I'm at today, but I just don't give up. I live each day and each moment I wake up, I think I'm going to, I'm going to get a new location today. And I've done that for the last 12 years and it's been amazing where I've, where I've landed and there's no stopping now. I mean, 
Just keep going. Do it. That's what I'm you you won't regret you did. Truly. Easiest business in the entire world. It's it's also the, I mean, to be real, it's it's boring business because you set it and you, you're you like, okay, what do I do with all this time I got? <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, and, you, and you don't have to quit your nine to five. And I don't recommend that either. And, you know, my case was a little different, but you can have your nine to five and literally vaulting, you're vaulting your own machines and your route only takes you like an hour or two. And you, you could put enough cash in there so you don't have, you could load them machines once a month if you wanted to. So you don't, you don't quit your nine to five until you can replace your income or at least your liabilities, right? Once you've replaced your liabilities with your asset income, which are your ATMs, you're now financially free. So you got to figure out what that number is. For some people, it's $3,000, usually at a $200 minimum income per ATM. Some are a lot higher. Most are a lot higher. It's about 12 ATMs. It's very attainable. You can do that in a year. We have clients that achieve 12 to 15. I have a client that done, has done 20 machines in under a year, right? So yeah, you just got to figure out what that number is. Know your why and just take the leap. I'm Let's talking about that's what I'm talking you know? about, guys. Hey, yeah, guys, Mike, man, I appreciate you coming on, guys. How many of you guys liked Mike's presentation, man? He, you guys are sleeping on this. He has, we'll just say, hundreds of ATMs. And if you get that number of $200 a month, you get an idea of how much you can make minimum for those ATMs. So we're trying to give you as much valuable content as possible. So comment Mike below. Comment Mike if you want Mike to come on again so you can bring on some technical questions, some processing questions, profit, all the experience that he has to bring on. I like it. I'm seeing a lot of mics here. I'm seeing a lot That's of mics. Awesome. 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 Thanks, Michael. you guys. Hey, I appreciate yeah. it. We'll, we'll try to get you on again another time, right? Anytime, Gannon. Thanks for having me on. It's been great being with you guys. Y'all have a good evening. Okay. For See you sure, later. For sure. Cool. All right, guys, man. So we're going to breeze through this last lesson, guys. And I also have a special announcement right after this because, man, I was, this was supposed to be done like 10 minutes ago. So at the end of the day, guys, and I know uh, Paul's going to be like, man, hey, do not tell them about the. See, I'm telling you, like, I got the special announcement after this, guys, right? Now, how many of you guys are excited to know the trick to expanding past ATMs? And I'm not saying in lieu of ATMs. I'm saying you build a business and you build another business right next to it. I want you to comment build below, guys. I want you to comment build because I'm going to breeze through. This is going to be the fastest amount of information you got. So if you're driving right now on the way home, pull over. I don't care if you're on the I-5 or the interstate or in Maryland right now. Pull over. This is going to be a dangerous amount of information, guys, right? So uh, let me get my screen ready because we're going to pump through this, guys, right? So number one question again. Question again is like, hey, do I just stick to just one business? And it depends. But when people want to expand, because we're all about complementing businesses, when you want to expand, you've got to have an approach. So I thought to myself, you know what? I get this question so many times. Let me break down a presentation. Now, I'm old school. I like PowerPoint. I don't know if you guys were in that era when you actually had PowerPoint and it was, you know, everyone used it. Not anymore, but I like it, right? So I'm going to break down step by step exactly how you can expand your business 